Welcome to this last video on my Simple Shed build series. In this video, I'm getting rid of the hose bib and I'm installing this new light. So I've cut back the insulation to expose the pipe. So you definitely want to make sure you've got your water cut off at this point. And I'm just using some cheap pipe cutters that I've used for years. These work pretty well on smaller diameter pipes. If you get to a larger diameter pipe, it, these are not what you want to use. They're, you'll get a cut that is not perpendicular to the pipe. I went ahead and cut off the other end of the pipe so I could easily pull it out of the hole. So the light has the wires coming out the back and I don't really like that so I'm going to go ahead and pop this end cap off and drill a hole in it and route the wires out the side. I also cut a quarter inch piece of chipboard to extend the back of the light so that it goes around the hanger for the rafter. So the hole's going to have to go in this side and we'll route the wires along the top. I'm using some three quarter inch conduit to run the wire through the wall and then up along the back here. That'll protect it from hitting it with a shovel or something else when I'm hanging the tools up. To secure the pipe on the top, I cut out a little rebate of the scrap two by four and I'm just gonna screw this into the studs. I'm using some two and a half inch exterior grade wood screws.
So the builder must have run out of 15 amp outlets and used a 20 amp outlet. It's not the end of the world. It is a little confusing though. This is 14-2 wire on a 15 amp circuit. So I'm gonna replace the 20 amp outlet with this 15 amp GFCI one. And that's what I'm gonna hook into my light in my shed. So the way that these GFCI outlets work is the line will be coming from your panel or upstream in the circuit and the load will be what's protected further down. This is what's going to be hooked up to the wire that I just pulled from my shed and that will get the GFCI protection. This is where I get shot. The problem is if I turn the power off, I lose my lights. And yeah, it would be nice to have the plugs and the lights on different circuits, but I had no say in that. So I ended up using one of these Wago lever nuts to make a pigtail for the ground. The last thing I have to do is just push this back in and secure it. But first I'm gonna make sure the light works. So I think this LED gives off a really good amount of light and it brightens up in in my little shed here, I can see everything. It's not too much though, and I also like where I put it over the header here. It doesn't get in the way of anything. This is a small shed, so it doesn't actually take up any space that I would use for something else. Since it's right over the door, I can't really hang anything up here, so this worked out really well. I'm gonna use some of this concrete fix around the conduit where it goes through the wall just to hold it in place and I'll do it both here and on the inside. So one of the great things about this concrete fix from Sika is that you can use it on a vertical surface and it stays where you put it. So that I don't create a super highway for ants, centipedes, spiders, and everything else to come into my house, I'm gonna go ahead and use some spray foam. I'm just gonna put it on the ends here and then in the shed. Well, that'll wrap up this video on getting rid of the hose bib and installing a light in my simple shed. That also wraps up this build series for my simple shed. I hope you found something useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.